Hi everyone, I make Excel and PowerPoint templates to help you get ahead in your career and help make your work and your business life a lot easier. This one we're looking at is grouping ideas where we're grouping the ideas in their affinity to each other. If we uh, put all of these uh, into the group number one, for example, then all of these ideas are going to change and show in group number one with no blank spaces and a lot of other special techniques that we'll quickly go into. Let's get into the worksheet. The first thing we're going to do is do the general framing and the general coloring of our worksheet so we know where everything fits and we may speed up the process as we go along. Let's give ourselves a nice width of around, say, 23. We'll merge and center this header and this one we can say this is our grouped ideas brainstorming. Of course, we want to center that and maybe we'll put that a little bit to the left and just indent that ever so slightly. Our focusing question, we want that to be over to the right and uh, put a nice border around this one too. We'll copy this across just so that all of the, so it's a, an easier way to do it. And this will be our facilitator. Copy that across again. And this will be our date. Each of these we want to be in the middle and probably aligned to the left maybe with a little indent and that looks perfect. Now we can start looking at the tables and the table data, which is the way that we're going to start grouping everything together. Now from around 10 downwards, let's make these a little bit higher, probably around 23 to 30 will be good enough for now. And the rest, we can start putting the borders around our table so we know where everything is going to fit. We'll give our grouped ideas a little bit of a gray, like a very light gray. And the color for our headers, let's make these a bit of a beautiful turquoise. We'll give it a bit of a nice sandy color on the top. Let's select this particular table and we can do all of our borders at the same time by selecting more borders. A nice normal line to separate, uh, but then a dashed line in between and that is starting to look really good. These are our instructions, and now let's add in our actual headings. So we want brainstormed ideas, and the group. The group can be up the top, and what sort of group is it going to be? It'll be numbered for us at first, but it can actually be grouped by anything we like. It can be grouped by name uh, or anything else. And that's one of the best parts about this. And we'll show you how to do that as we're going along. Now we can start getting rid of the grid lines. And if we do that, it's looking a lot cleaner. Now we're going to add the next lot of headings. So we've got groups. This is the type of group we're looking at here. We'll just copy this all the way across. And we'll copy values only so it doesn't mess with the formatting. We will center this and make it bold. Maybe we'll make it a bit of a charcoal color just so that it's a bit more pleasing to the eye. And same for our groups. This is going to be important later because group one, two, three, or however we choose to, to group these items is how the formula is actually going to pick up on them. And so we're going to make those bold and we will just copy these across as well. Now we've got a really good template and we know exactly where everything fits. So we can actually start adding in the formulas and it's very simple. So first of all, what we need to do is actually create two groups in our table. And the first one, if we select all of these cells here, just go up to our top left and we say, this is our ideas. Well, these are our ideas. So we'll just say idea. And this one over here is our group. So that's how we're grouping all of these together. And we're going to use the formula to reference these two items. Now the way we do this is with a, it's actually an array and we're using a few different functions. First of all, we're using if error so that if it, if it, uh, if it returns an error, we actually want it to return nothing so that it's going to be blank. Uh, then we want to index our ideas row. And if the group number that we place here matches 
the, the number that we place up here, or it could be any text that we have as well, any other name, and that's the best part about this. Then it's going to return that, and it's going to reduce the spaces by using min, row, and rows all together. And when we, uh, when we take this formula and we select Control, Shift, Enter, that will turn into an array. And if we just test this now, and we add a one to our group, then it also appears in our brainstormed ideas. And how good is that? Now it will mess up our table a little bit, but if we copy and drag this all the way across, and then if we copy and drag it all the way down as well, and there it appears. We'll just fix up the formatting by going to our borders again. Now I did say we could group this by anything we actually chose. So let's pretend, uh, uh, we'll say this is Billy's group, for example, and this is this is Anne's group, uh, and this might be Michael's Michael's group. Now, what happens? As you can see, now it's no longer working for us. But if we change these groups up the top here, now we'll have Billy. All of a sudden, it's grouped back into Billy, and this one into Anne, and this one might be Michael. Now every time we add extra items to our table, they'll also be added, once we've got the groups, to our table here with no spaces and all neatly packed away into their own little groups. You can use this for many different things. You could use this for, for rostering people to different areas. You could use this for grouping the ideas and brainstorming ideas and putting them all together. The choice really is yours. I've really enjoyed spending the time with you and creating this with you. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.